Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be going through the changes of creating realistic materials, some of the changes and improvements in v 5 for SketchUp. With the recent updates in v 5, it's become a little different to create realistic materials using PBR textures. In v Next, we had the generic materials for the specular workflow and the PBR material for metalness workflow each of them with its unique set of textures and material composition. In v 5, you will notice that the PBR material is no longer available, so the PBR parameters have now been incorporated into the generic materials, along with a few improvements so that you can create photorealistic materials. Before we create our first material, give this video a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss the next time we drop a new video. So we're going to create this wood flooring material from CC0 Textures. This is an excellent source of free PBR textures. As well, the download for the SketchUp file will be available in the description in case you want to follow along. Once you open the download folder, you should see all the textures needed to compose that material. In our case, we have the color map, the ambient occlusion, normal displacement, and the roughness map. So let's create a generic material and add all the textures. So let's start by adding the color map into the diffuse slot. And let's also combine it with the ambient occlusion map. So you want to right click and wrap both of these textures in the mix operator. Make sure the ambient occlusion is in linear color space and switch the blending option to multiply. So let's expand the reflection tab and here is where you're going to find some of the new changes in V-Ray 5. You will find the metalness parameters as well as the surface control for the reflection. And of course, these are the parameters that set apart the metal materials from the non-metal materials. Metal materials are meant to have a metalness value of 1 and if you have a metalness texture you can just load it on this slot here. As well for the surface control you can change between glossiness and roughness. Both of these are basically inference of each other and you're also likely to get a texture for them as well. So when you do you can just insert it on this reflection slot here. So let's change our reflection color to white to activate the reflections. Change the surface control to roughness and apply that roughness map here in linear color space. As for the bump settings, you will find one by default from the generic material and here you can easily load in your bump maps or normal map. You can also add a second bump map to this same material by adding it from the attributes menu. So let's take that one normal map that we have and apply it here in linear color space. And make sure to switch the bump map to normal map. For the displacement in Vera 5, it works somewhat different. It now works as an object modifier and you would apply it similar to how you would the V-Ray Fur. If you head over to the V-Ray Object Toolbar, you will find a new icon for the displacement modifier. You want to make sure you're working with a group or component. You want to click on this icon to add the displacement. And if you go back to the Asset Editor, under the Geometry tab is where you will find the displacement settings. And here is where you can load in your displacement or height map in linear color space. And this is a very simple workflow you can follow to create realistic materials using PBR textures. And I like how we now have one material to create either or, especially how all the features can now fit seamlessly into creating either of the materials. Now for our metalness example, I've created this metal plate material. The setup is pretty similar, but for the most part, the changes will happen under the reflection layer.
So for this particular material, I skipped the reflection color and instead I activated the reflections by using the metalness parameter. So here is where you get to load your metalness texture in linear color space. And if you don't have a texture, all you have to do is switch this value from 0 to 1. So the metalness parameters is what's going to give your material that metal like reflection and it's also going to take the reflection color and drive from the diffuse texture. And to finalize I use the roughness surface control and apply the roughness texture in linear color space under the glossiness parameter. And this is pretty much the configuration that gives your material metallic properties and there are definitely a couple of new features that can help us improve the quality and realism of our material so we're going to save that for a future video. If you need a video that goes into a little bit more detail about each of the textures you want to click on the card on the screen and it will take you to the same topic in the V-Ray Next for SketchUp version. Now the generic material composition is also being optimized to manage multi-layered materials with the addition of the coat and sheen properties. The coat layer is great for adding reflection details to materials like car paint and carbon fibers and also can be beneficial to your common surfaces like wood and countertops. The coat settings is added by default to the generic material and the settings are linked to the surface controls of that main material. As for the settings, these are parameters that we've seen before. So let's adjust some of these and see what we can create. Now for this example, we have our rims with the carbon fiber material from the V-Ray library. And this is what it looks like without the coat. Clearly you notice the main reflection layer on both of these renderings. Now to add a clear coat, just switch the amount value from zero to one. And you're going to get this typical clear coat as you can see from the results. And we're getting the clear coat because we have a white color here by default. So the coat color obviously determines the color of the coat. So let's adjust this parameter to a different color. And as you can see, our rims now have this deep red coat application. The reflection glossiness controls the sharpness of the reflections and the default value of run is already giving us the sharp reflections. So let's decrease this value to 0.9 to add a subtle blur to the coating reflection. As for the index of refraction, increasing this value is going to increase the strength of the reflections resulting in a shinier coat layer. And these are some examples with a value of 2.5. And a value of 5.0 and this is pretty much how the coat layer works you can always try to achieve more by using the procedural textures and the coat bump parameter and this setting is great to add more realism to materials that can benefit from an extra reflective layer Now the sheen properties serve a very similar purpose except it's meant to work best for fabric materials. Now the sheen setting adds a fall off reflection layer on top of your material and gives it that shiny highlight when it's hit by light. And this is our example, all of the pillows have a fabric material with the sheen layer removed. I've also added an extra light to target the reflections so we can get a little bit more when the sheen is activated. Now enabled to see the sheen parameters, you have to switch your material parameters from basic to advanced and you should be able to see it right below the coat layer. Now the sheen settings itself is very simple to adjust. We have the sheen color which controls the color of the sheen layer. A black color is going to disable the sheen and colors with a dark tone are a little bit less visible. Now the sheen glossiness controls the sharpness of the reflections, a value of 1 makes the sheen completely invisible and values closer to 0 make the effect more visible. So there's a little bit of a trial and error process involved, so here are my results. For the first example I used a lighter color to complement the red pillow and I used a value of 0.6 for the glossiness so that the sheen layer is a little bit visible.
For the second example, I copied over the diffuse layer and used the color correction to adjust and add a little bit of contrast to the textures as well as adding to its brightness. And for the glossiness, I used a value of 0.4. For our third example, the dark gray pillow, I used a light gray color with a glossiness of 0.5. And for our last example, I wanted the sheen to have a little bit of a shiny silk-like quality, so I used a somewhat bright blue color with a glossiness of 0.8. So these are my results and keep in mind that they may differ for you based on the amount of lighting that you have coming into your scene. I guess the great thing about having one generic material is that you're free to create and not limited to settings for a specific material. So aside from the coat and sheen layers, there's also the new UVW randomizer and the improved dirt and weathering textures. Since we're yet to cover those topics, be sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out when they're uploaded to the channel. If you've reached this point of the video, I want to thank you for making it to the very end and I hope the content was clear and that you were able to get some value out of it. So don't forget to like, share and check us out on other social media platforms. As always, I'll see you guys next time.